Hi there everyone. I'm Wendy and some of you will know that I'm the under fives pastor at Cosby Coast Vineyard. And I've been asking God this week what it was that he wanted me to share in my vlog. Uh, and I felt that he was just leading me to tell you a little bit about me. And so that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to try and do a whistle stop tour so that I don't go on for ages. But I'm going to go back a good number of years whenever I was seven and mum and dad gave their yes to Jesus. And so then my sister and I, my older sister and I, we were brought up in a Christian home and we went to church and we heard all about God. Uh, and over the years, I think I realised that I just, I knew lots of information about God, but I didn't really know him in my heart. I really didn't know his love for me. I didn't understand it. And so by the time I got to 16, I probably felt a bit disconnected and I started pulling myself away from God and away from church. Um, and I started making some choices in life that weren't great. And so I probably felt a bit agitated. I think when I think about that, it was probably a bit of agitation. And looking back, I can see that this agitation really was God just challenging me because he only ever wants the very best for us as our father. But at the time, I couldn't marry that agitation with what I needed to do. Um, probably the easier thing for me was just to pull myself away. And so that's what I did. And over time, I pulled myself away. Fast forward a number of years. And at 20, mom and dad um, had my little baby sister. And she was three weeks early and she was an unwell girl. She had spina bifida and she had another couple of very serious health issues and the doctors said to mum and dad really there's not an awful lot of hope for her she probably won't survive she was a very sick girl uh, and I remember just looking at her and seeing this beautiful little tiny life and I fell in love hook line and sinker I just think at that stage I fully understood what it was to know true love and she was a very unwell child for her first year and had a, you know, a lot of health issues as time went on. And, um, but I do remember looking back again, seeing the church come in and support and love mom and dad through it all. And I was able to watch on at this, um, but again, a wee bit disconnected. And, but I could see that mom and dad just held on to their faith through all oh, they saw God work and God gave mum so many promises and I remember her sharing them with me but it not really that not really connecting with my heart but I I could see the support and the love was there and I could see mum holding on to God and her faith just being so strong in God during that time and it was really difficult over the years um and now or my wee sister she is just she is a total miracle she is just she's got such good health um but she's now married and she has a wonderful man who absolutely loves and adores her and looks after her so well uh, and so that's been just so beautiful for me to see her life unfold and then another couple of years later um i don't really know what was going on at the time but again i just remember feeling that I, I felt an agitation inside again and and I didn't really know what was going on but I knew that God was calling me and he started filling my dreams and he started filling my thoughts and I didn't really tell anybody about it but I just remember knowing that he was chasing me but something deep inside knew this more than my head knew it but there was again an agitation growing I didn't really want to hear anybody talk about him. I used to get annoyed whenever mum and dad um, played worship music. Um, and my nana, she was this tiny little woman who loved God with all of her heart. And she would um, pray with me and um, love me and let me cry on her shoulder when things went wrong. Because by this stage, um, I had made some really wrong decisions in life and had already like had a broken um, engagement and so there was hurt there and there was I think I, I put what I my desire to be loved I would have put it onto people and so I was left unfulfilled and um, but I do remember my nana like telling me that she prayed for me and I had an old Sunday school teacher who told me that she prayed for me every day and so I was surrounded by people who loved me and prayed for me and um, 
I was still living at home at this stage and I remember mum and dad, it really, they were just so wise and kind and they would have let me fall and make lots of mistakes, but they were always so present to pick me up um, and to help me get back on my feet again and support me through it and just love me through it. And so that's that's what I was aware of. I was aware of this unconditional love um, that allowed me to stumble and fall, but they, they held on to me through it all. And But anyway... I knew something inside that God was calling me, but I couldn't quite put a voice to it. And then one night out of the blue, I was 22, um, I remember I took mum completely by surprise and I said to her, right, I've heard there's an event in Belfast, it was a Christian event, and I want you to take me to it. And her shock was just like, because she just, there's not what she knew from me. Um, and so she brought me to this event and I knew that night I was going to give my yes to Jesus because I had already thought when I do this, I didn't want this to be a private thing. I wanted it to be public. I wanted to publicly say, Jesus, I am following you. <laughs> it gets my heart even now. But I think in my heart, I knew. I knew God was calling me home. He was saying, Wendy, I love you. I see you. And I love you anyhow and so that night I dragged my mum physically by the hand up to the front whenever they called and said um does anybody want to know, to know more about Jesus and I dragged her up to the front and that night I gave my yes to Jesus and so for almost 30 years now I have lived with Jesus in my life and he has chased me and loved me and forgiven me and held me and he's just done that right through it all and I mean I wouldn't be human if I said that it was all perfect and everything was like whoa it was all great from then no there's been lots of trials there's been lots of hurts there's been lots of silly choices made but he has loved me through it all he has um honestly given me so much joy and danced with me and laughed with me through all of these journeys in life and then um i probably let's think I'll, I'll go on a number of few years and so i married chris whenever uh, i was 28 and we've been married for 22 years now and we have three beautiful funny crazy loud daughters teenage daughters We've got a dog and we've two cats and honestly house the house is fun. Um and five years ago our eldest daughter took unwell. Uh, and she was so unwell that she had to she had to skip school and she missed her two years of GCSE. Um and that really was a, a real time of trial and uncertainty and not really knowing what was going on, but that's her story to tell. She's she's doing great now but she um it, it was tough for us it was tough to know what was going on and I think at that stage I knew there were so many people praying for her and praying for us as a family but actually all I could really do inside was just say God help please help I don't know what's going on just help me and I think that was the cry of my heart for those number of years whenever she was so unwell and um, but during that time I had I um I always loved being with kids. I just love being able to feed into their lives and and cherish them and just show them who God had made them be. Even if I didn't say the words to them, I loved to just like just show kids that they are incredible. And I find that they are so real and so honest that that they they don't take any nonsense either. And so they keep me real. And so I child minded for almost 10 years and I, it was just a wonderful time. And, and I had such wonderful families, really beautiful families that I had the privilege of, of looking after their kids during the day. And um, But when, when our eldest daughter took well, I stopped work. I stopped child minding so that I could look after her. And um, this is a time of like, just actually having a bit of space to, to spend with God and he started showing me that he had another plan for us and that he was calling us up the north coast 
And I remember saying to him, Lord, if this is what you want us to do, we are on board. We we talked about it as a family and everybody got on board and we said, OK. So we put the house on the market and we said, right, Lord, whatever you want, if you want us to move up, we'll move up. If you want us to stay, we'll stay. We just give our, our yes again to him because that's what life with Jesus is. It's actually giving our yes every day. Lord, what what is it you want me to do today? Um, and so that's that's what we do. We just talk openly in our home about Jesus and we um we all love him we all follow him we all give our yes to him every day and so this is what happened he took us on a journey we we moved up north coast and again it's just beautiful things that he did for us to bring us up here and provided a home and school and and um, for the girls and he had already shown us that we were going to come to ccv and so our very first day there, we were welcomed with open arms and we knew we were home. We knew we were in with family. Um, and six months ago, then uh, an opportunity, God again had been showing me, I'd gone to the Encounter School of Mission for a year um, through Cosby Coast Vineyard. And that was a, just a challenging year of just like saying, God, I, I am going to like go so deep into your word and, and take your promises. And we, we just saw him move in such wonderful power. And it was just really a, a, a time of just, yeah, just getting so fed by him and, and learning so much more about him. But my heart just grew in, in, in love with him. Um, and it was, it was a wonderful time. And he started showing me that I was going to go back to work, but I couldn't quite see what it looked like. And then six months ago, um, an opportunity come up in Cosby Coast Vineyard as the under fives pastor and for me it was just like my dream job and so I applied for it and I got the job and this is what I'm doing now um, and I think again I just felt I wanted to share just so that even everybody that comes to Cosby Coast Vineyard or not just for you to like have a little idea of what my life has looked like there's there's more has gone on over time, but that is just a whistle stop tour. Um, but I would love to finish with Psalm 40 because it's a psalm that I love and it's a psalm that means a lot to me. And it says, so it's verses one to three. I should have put glasses on here. Um, psalm 40 and it says, I waited patiently for the Lord and he inclined to me and he heard me cry. He also brought me out of a horrible up out of a horrible pit, out of the Mary clay, and he set my feet upon a rock. He is the rock. He's our foundation. Um, and he established my steps. And that's what he's done for almost 30 years. Established my step. He has put a new song in my mouth. Praise to our God. It's something that comes from deep within. Many will say it and fear and they will trust in the Lord. And that is my hope. My hope is that all these little ones that lives I have, um, just a little part of my hope is that they will come to the Lord. Your families will come to the Lord, my community, my family, my friends, um, that, that you will come to know the Lord because he is a good, loving father and he wants what is very best for us. He is present and he is real. So if there's anybody that wants to talk to me further about knowing God, please feel free to private message me or you can get in touch um, with with anybody at Cosby Coast Vineyard and, and um, anybody there would be so happy to talk with you. But anyway, there you go. That's a little about me. Take care, everybody, and I will see you all again soon. Bye.